Thanks. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really delighted to be here. It's, a, it's an enormous honour. Um, look, I think, uh, as we heard from the last session, the research is very clear. Access to public green space provides so many health benefits. I like to use this tagline, making public space everyone's business, because it's incredibly important that we all acknowledge the value of them. The physical and mental um, benefits, um, how they can increase physical activity levels, boost people's moods and lowering stress and anxiety levels. So it's really important that we are um, showcasing that in all the programs and the tools and the resources that we are leading. And um, there's the why slide. I like to use this slide. It's everything from the amenity and experience, creating walkable, active, connected spaces. Of course, it's about shade, it's about air quality, it's about climate change, and it's also about character, a very, very important um, determining factor into the enjoyment that people have in their local areas. Um, so when we talk about the Premier's priority that we're leading, which is indeed called Greener Public Spaces, it's about walkable access to great green public spaces from people's homes. So we measure that within 10 minutes walk of people's homes, so roughly 800 metres. Of course, we prefer 400 metres because we know that people who are close to green space um, use it daily, and of course that then helps um, their health um, and all those other things that I noted before. The program that we're leading is uh, everything from advocating the importance, the value of it. How do we measure the value? And I'll talk to that a little bit. How do we think up the pilot ideas through to the legacy ideas and systems change is at the heart of it. So, of course, public spaces in the news, we've all been reading about it. It's been our lifeline, hasn't it, during COVID? And, of course, walking has been the centrepiece of that. Um, we moved very fast in 2020 to measure the impact that public space was having. We've done the same survey in 2021. And what we found was that there was actually growth. It was very high level um, use of our public space and incredible growth. Um, um, up to 68% of people um, valued their parks the most, 48% um, walking trails, of course, beaches figured and a number of others. But demand for public space definitely increased, as did walking and cycling. So there we see the growth. And this report is about to be released. Very happy to share it with anyone, public spaces during COVID-19. And I think there you can see that growth in, in parks use um, right through to off-leash dog areas, Thomas. You mentioned that your, your love of um, walking your dog, as do I, and, and the health benefits of getting out um, with our four-legged friends. Um, what we do too in the program that we're leading in the Department of Planning is a huge amount of research. A lot of it is community research where we, where we talk to community about what they want to do in, in public space. And you know, the interesting thing is always that walking, hiking, jogging is always the most, but depending on where it is in Sydney, in the Western suburbs of Sydney, for instance, water, access to water is increasingly becoming something that um, uh, the community really want to see. Critical too to the work that we're doing is that systems change that we need. So we've developed a public space charter, which is in draft form, hopefully soon to be released. It's one of the key pieces in guiding our program. And it's that commitment to quality, I think, that you mentioned, Thomas, in your earlier talk. You know, quantity is one thing, but quality really matters. So we've come up with 10. I don't think there's anything radical about these 10, um, but they've been really road tested. And we've, um, you know, we're, we're pretty confident they're right. They're everything from the spaces needing to be well managed, green and resilient, healthy and attractive, critical things like open and welcoming. And of course, core to this is connecting with country at the heart of what we do. Um, other things that we've developed is this simple tool that anybody can use when they're thinking about their local park to major precinct planning with four key questions. Um, am I able to get there? Am I able to stay? Am I able to play and participate? And am I able to connect? And they grew from um, the Our Everyone Can Play um, program, which was really about play spaces. 
across New South Wales to get families out, all ages actually, not to 99, out enjoying their local spaces and very specific to particular places. Um, so that they're not just that, that regulation playground that gets dumped <laughs> across a geographical area, something really special about them needing to be fit for purpose. The other thing we did was this, um, this toolkit, this two-page toolkit, free, open, like all our resources online to be able to use. The program objectives across all our half a billion dollars worth of funding programs for greater public space are supporting investment in the creation of high quality public space, addressing critical open space shortfalls. I think we heard a little bit about that earlier in one of the talks. And then here, how do we achieve those program objectives? Um, it's very much about connecting the network, I think is important. Great to have green spaces, but the continuation, we know people like to walk loops and walk 5K routes and the rest of it. Um, so that's the one I wanted to draw out there. Um, the other thing that um, we're leading that's part of these programs is parks for people. Eight new parks, extraordinary parks that we're co-designing with community. We're drawing on their um, advice three times. They're helping us shape what they want. And the, the three top vision statements we heard were a peaceful place to relax, a fun place with lots of different activities and play equipment, and an exciting and adventure, adventurous discovery. So that idea of how do we plan for the types of places that people want. And my second to last slide is just this Reliance, I suppose it's the other pair to the why at the top of my presentation. We need to think about those environmental benefits, obviously attractive, green, comfortable, sustainable. The social benefits, you know, that's to do with the community health um, of, of our societies. The economic benefits, we know that there's serious economic benefit and attraction of, of of, of people to places that are green, and then of course the cultural. How do, how do these places become distinctive places for the community to express themselves in? And I'm gonna end on a yoga slide. I think I heard mention of yoga earlier, a beautiful one um, in, um, uh, in Yamba, I think this one is. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Back to you.